before we go on to the second part of uh, transformations, 9-2, which is translations, I want to review some things about transformations. Um, chapter 9, transformations. I want to review some properties of isometries. Remember what an isometry is? An isometry is transformation that does not change the size or shape of the figure. Okay? So properties of isometries. Isometries are congruence transformations. That means they maintain, you know, the image is congruent to the pre-image. Okay? What we do to the figure is the same size and shape as what we started with. They are congruence transformations. They preserve the following properties. Properties are between us of points. That means if we have a point that is between two other points, they're going to remain there. Position of the points is going to remain the same. They preserve collinearity. If there are points that are on the same line, or placed on the same line, then those points are going to remain on the same line. Isometries also preserve angle measurement. Now, angle measurement determines the shape of a figure. So that means it's going to preserve the shape of the figure. It's going to make sure the angle measurements are the same. It also preserves the distance measure, which is the size. So between the angle measure and the distance measure, it's going to maintain the shape and size of the original pre-image. This right here, the between the points of collinearity, means there's not going to be any switching around or twisting of that figure within itself. Okay? It's important to understand what isometries are. Isometries are transformations that maintain the congruence. They're known as congruence transformations. Why? Because the pre-image is congruent to the image. The image is congruent to the pre-image. The result of the transformation is congruent to what we started with. Important property of transformations the property of isometries. Now let's look at translations. Transformations that are translations. The translations are transformations that move all points of a figure the same distance in the same direction. They're also known as slides, shifts, or glides. Okay? Translations are isometries. Now, what are isometries? Remember, isometries are congruence transformations. They maintain certain properties of the figure. They maintain the betweenness of points. They maintain collinearity. They maintain the angle measurement, and they maintain the distance measurement, which means they maintain the same shape and size. The points are not going to be twisted. The lines are going to be relative to each other in the same positions. Okay, what happens? We have a pre-image and an image. If our pre-image is x, y, and we want to imply a rule to get to the image of x plus 4 and y minus 5, here's an example. A red is our pre-image. We have an a of negative 1, 5. We have a b of negative 3, 1. We want to apply 4, add 4 to the x. So if we add 4 to the a, we're going to get 3. If we add, subtract 5 from the y, we're going to get 0. So our new, our a prime, our a tick mark is going to be 3, 0. Let's go over to the b to get our new b. If we add 4 to negative 3, we're going to get 1. If we subtract 5 from 1, we're going to get negative 4. So what we have is we simply move this to the same distance in the same direction, all the points, We've moved it to the right 4 and down 5. Now, another way to look at this is we have two figures. We look at it, they appear to have congruent, they appear to be congruent. So let's see what the rule is. We don't have a rule, so let's see if we can find out what the rule is. We have a pre-image, let's say X and Y, and we have an image. Let's take our A. Get from A to A prime, on our X, we're going to take a negative 5, and we want to get to 1. What do we have to do to a negative 5 to make it a 1? 
We have to add 6, don't we? So down here, we're going to be adding 6 to our x. Now, let's look at the y value. We have a 4, and we want to go to 3. What do we have to do to our y of 4 to get it to a 3? We have to add a negative 1, or we have to subtract 1. So what we do is we discover what the rule is, and our rule is add 6 to x and subtract 1 from y. Now let's make sure all the other points maintain the same thing. If we add 6 to negative 2, do we get 4? Yes. If we subtract 1 from 6, do we get 5? Okay, so that's the same. If we add 6 to negative 2, do we get 4? Should. If we subtract 1 from 2, do we get 1? Yeah. Okay? So all three of those points follow the same pattern. Therefore, this would be a translation. Congruent to congruent figure. Our preimage is this. We looked at the figures to determine what the rule is for this. And our image, and the rule was x plus 6 and y minus 1. So, we can be given a rule to move by, or we can be given two images and then discover what the rule is. Alright, two different ways to look at this. You'll have these, both of these kinds of problems on homework, on your test, uh, chapter test, six weeks test, and semester test. So make sure you understand both ways of how to uh, apply these rules and solve them. And remember, translations are isometries. They are congruent transformations. They maintain congruency, same shape, same size. The okay, last thing we want to do on translations is talk about a different type of translation. We talked about a rule where we add a certain amount of x to x and a certain amount to y, and we move that figure across the coordinate grid using that rule, or where we have two figures and we discover what the rule is and we use and determine what that rule is. Now, this one introduces a new concept called composition transformation. Composition transformation is a transformation made up of multiple successive transformations. That means we do one transformation, then we do another one, then we do another one, and do another one. By the end, we get this figure that's been turned, changed, whatever else, and we have to determine what the result is. Um, and those successive transformations can be reflections, they can be translations, they can be rotations, they can even be dilations. And that would be a composition. We're composing a transformation made up of multiple transformations. They could also be multiple translations. For instance, animation uses compositions by simply taking one form and morphing it through a series of motions putting frames in place and says, I would like for you to move this. We have computer programs that automatically say, I want this figure to look like this when it gets here. Morph it and change it as it goes. And then I want you to move it here, I want you to move it here, I want you to move it here. And I want you to maintain the shape and the size and the orientation and translate it across. Or you could have it rotate. That would be an example of a of a composition. Animation would be an example of a composition transformation. Now we're actually going to do a translation using reflection. We can do a, a translation using reflection across two parallel lines. What this is going to do is it's actually going to move it and slide it across. And here's an example of it. We have a triangle. I like to use triangles because we can tell what the orientation is. You can see that it actually moved. We have triangle ABC. Here's a line of reflection. We're going to reflect it across that. Notice that it flips. When it flips, we have an A prime, a B prime, and a C prime. Now we have a second line of reflection. Here's a second line of reflection. We're going to take our first image. It becomes a pre-image to get another image. And when we do that, we now have a new A called double prime or double tick mark, a new B, double tick mark, and a new C double tick mark, okay? Could we do this again? Yes. Could we do it again? Yes. Could we do it again? Yes. Every time we do it, we would simply add another tick mark to the letters to indicate what copy that was. So we start with a pre-image, create an image. Our image becomes a pre-image, and we create a new image.
Okay? That's a reflection across two parallel lines, which creates a translation. That's what we've got for translations. That's about it. Remember that a translation is an isometry, meaning that it is a congruence transformation. It maintains all the properties of an isometry. Those are things you need to know. Pretty simple stuff.